Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. Today we will talk about 5 energy in Tai Chi. But first, let's get high on tea. This week's tea is Pu Er Cha. Pu Er tea originates from Yunnan province. This tea is said to have more than a thousand years of world history. Pu Er tea leaf belong to the big tea leaf category. With the popularity of uh, small leaf trees such as uh, many famous type of uh, green teas, Pu Er had not been popular in the last uh, 500 years, perhaps more. So, until quite recently, Pu Er tea was mostly sold and uh, consumed in remote areas with underdeveloped economics. This type of tea is called Bian Chui Cha or border tea, frontier tea, compared to high-end teas consumed in Inner China. But with marketing efforts, the price of poor tea has repeatedly broken records. Poor tea has been very popular since the early 2000s due to many reasons. Especially the incredible marketing promotion efforts, and of course, increased awareness of uh, its health benefits. You will be surprised to know a poor cake was sold at uh, five thousand U.S. dollar, which is not even the highest price it has uh, fetched. Actually. It is just like the market bubble surrounding the Dutch tulip bubbles or tulip mania in history. Poor tea will have the same fate. Bear in mind that this crazy situation is not caused by poor tea itself, but by poor traders. Anyway, let's focus on the tea itself for now. Poor tea is sold in different shapes, but the most popular one is the cake shape, due to historical uh, ease of uh, transportation. Poor tea was and still is produced in remote mountains area, and the transportation to cities was not easy. Even today, some poor producing area still have a difficult time transporting their products to major cities in that region. This situation has dramatically improved with the rising popularity and uh, an increase in the price of poor. Poor tea can be classified into two types of based on the processing method. The first is called Sheng Pu Er or Rao Pu Er, and uh, the other is called Shu Pu Er or Ripe Pu Er. Traditionally, Pu Er tea has always been naturally fermented for a long time, even multiple years or decades, after some simple processing procedures. So, Naturally fermented Pu Er tea is called Sheng Pu Er or Raw Pu Er. As a result, tea quality becomes better with time. Usually, the strong and often unpleasant taste of Raw Pu Er makes it hard to drink. The other type of Pu Er, Shu Pu Er or Ripe Pu Er, is fermented through a processing method. Now, let me talk about it briefly. Before 1973, only naturally fermented Pu Er or raw Pu Er was available. No Shou Pu existed back then. Since the natural fermentation for raw Pu Er requires many years worth of time before it was ready for consumption, a team of scientists led by Wu Qiying invented a processing method to shorten the fermentation time from years to 45 days or even less. This method is called Wu Dui Fa Jiao Ji Shu or Stacked Fermentation Technology. It is a modern technique to enhance 
microbial activity in poor leaf processing. Basically, it is the 45-day process that involves moistening large stacks of sun-dried raw tea leaves, piled high with regular and careful monitoring. The result of the accelerated fermentation process makes the tea leaf color very dark. So, shou or ripe pu'er is fermented in its manufacturing process. Let's have a look at the typical tea cake color of sheng pu and shu pu and the color of their tea decoctions. The dark color tea cake and decoction are both shu pu'er. Due to poor tea's special processing method, it is hard to categorize it. Some people categorize poor tea into the black tea category, but many experts prefer a whole new poor tea category. Poor is ideally brewed with water at 95 to 100 degrees Celsius for 5 to 7 seconds for the first brew with the increment of, of 3 seconds for every subsequent brew. I have many kilos of poor tea at home, and uh, I always enjoy drinking poor tea with friends. This is a raw cake. And uh, this is a ripe cake. This decoction is from ripe pork. And this one is from the raw cake. Pork tea is rich in health benefits. It's great for cleansing toxins and free radicals weight control and uh, regulating cholesterol, among other benefits. I'm sure many of you have uh, tried poor tea before. Like I said in the beginning, poor tea is uh, very interesting and of course, I will talk more about it in the future. Now, let's move on to today's main topic. Today, I will introduce a 5 energy concept in Tai Chi practice. Topics covered in today's video include first, Sheng Qi Tongtian theory, second, Qi in Tai Chi, third, five type of Qing Qi and Zhuo Qi in Tai Chi, fourth, Qing Qi and Zhuo Qi, understanding and application, fifth, principles of Qing Qi and Zhuo Qi, sixth, misperceptions, seventh, demonstration. 8. Correction of a student practice. 9. Take aways. So, without any further ado, let's get started. First, Sheng Qi Tongtian Theory. Huangdi Nei Jing or Inner Canon of the Yellow Emperor is an ancient Chinese medical text that has been considered a fundamental doctrine for Chinese medicine for more than 2000 years. This book is the must read for any serious TCM practitioner. The third chapter of this book is titled Sheng Qi Tong Tian Lun. Translation A discussion of the vitality of humans communicating and corresponding to the universe. End translation. This chapter talks about the concept of the unity of heaven and human beings. Yellow Emperor O Huangdi said, quote, Fu Zi Gu Tong Tian Zhe Sheng Zhi Ben, Ben Yu Yan Yang. End quote. Translation Since ancient times, it has been recognized that there is an intimate relationship between the activity and the life of human beings and the natural environment. The root of our life is yin and yang. End translation. He also said, quote, Shu Gu Jin He Wu Wei, 
，古正金柔，气血已流，凑理已密。如是则，骨气已随，紧道如法，常有天命。End quote. Translation. Therefore, one should be careful of what one consumes to ensure proper growth, reproduction, and development of bones, tendons, ligaments, channels, and collaterals. This will help generate the smooth flow of qi and blood, enabling one to live a long life. End translation. So, with other chapters, this chapter re-emphasizes the close relationship between human health and energy in the universe. Bear in mind that the term qi used in this chapter does not mean breath or breathing. It means vital energy. In martial art practice, qi applies the same principle as used in TCM. Then, what does qi imply in Tai Chi practice? That brings us to the next topic. 2. Qi in Tai Chi Qi in Tai Chi means energy, which includes many aspects such as physical strength, speed, concentration, angle, timing, experience, and so on, which I have talked about in prior videos. Chen Zhao Pi, one of the great masters of the last century, and the nephew as well as a student of Chen Fa Ke, wrote an article in his old age talking about the qi in Tai Chi. According to him, there are two types of qi, including qing qi and zhuo qi. The literal translations of qing qi and zhuo qi are clear energy and unclear energy, respectively. According to him, qing qi means prenatal energy and zhuo qi means sick energy. He also explained these two types of qi in detail which I will talk about in the next topic. It is worth discussing the terms Qing Qi and Zhuo Qi a bit further before explaining Chen Zhao Pi's writing since Qing Qi and Zhuo Qi form a pair of terms used very often in Chinese culture, and Chen Zhao Pi borrowed the pair of terms Qing Qi and Zhuo Qi to explain Tai Chi practice. According to TCM, the energy that is absorbed by the five organs is qing qi, while the energy expelled out of the body is zhuo qi. Also, according to Taoism, the energy that constitutes heavens is qing qi, while the energy that constitutes the earth is zhuo qi, since Qing Qi is light and lucid, while Zhuo Qi is heavy and unclear. So, in ancient China, Qing Qi and Zhuo Qi were used to express two opposite nature of different entities. To conclude, Qi in Tai Qi, especially the Qing Qi and Zhuo Qi, reflects the Qi concept is planned in the third chapter of Huangdi Nei Jing, or Inner Canon of the Yellow Emperor. The concept of unity of heaven and human beings can serve as guidance in Tai Chi practice. Topic 3. Five Types of Qing Qi and Zhuo Qi in Tai Chi According to Chen Zhao Pi, there are five types of each of Qing Qi and Zhuo Qi. First, let's look at the five Qing Qi categories. First, Xian Tian Zi Ran Zhi Qi, or prenatal energy. Xian Tian means prenatal, Zi Ran means naturally come with. Qi is energy. It is the energy inherited at the birth, or prenatal energy in Taoist terms. Second, Qian Kun Zheng Qi. Qian Kun means universe, Zheng Qi means rectitudinous energy. 
a Confucianism philosophical term. Chen Zhaopi called it yin yang energy and hard soft energy in Tai Chi practice. Third, Tai He Zhi Qi, or great harmonious energy. According to Chen Zhaopi, it is the Dan Tian energy or energy integrated from five organs, including the heart, liver, spleen, lungs, and the kidneys. It is also called Wu Qi Chao Yuan or five energy toward the origin, which I have introduced in my Xiu Dao video. Fourth, Hao Ran Zhi Qi, a term from Mengchu's. In that book, Mengchu's said, quote, Wu Shanyang Wu Hao Ran Zhi Qi, Qi Wei Qi Ye Zhi Da Zhi Gang, Yi Zhi Yang Er Wu Hai, Ze Sai Yu Tian Di Zhi Jian, end quote. Translation I'm skillful in nourishing my great spirit. The great spirit can be exceedingly great and exceedingly strong and nourished by rectitude without injury. It fills up all between heaven and earth. End translation. I introduced this concept in a prior video titled Stan's Internal Style Concept 7. Link is in the description. According to Chen Zhaopi, a Tai Chi practitioner should be able to remain in good health in practice. Fifth, Hun Yuan Yi Qi or Hun Yuan One Energy, a martial art term used to describe a martial art practice result. Chen Zhaopi used this term to express a solid body structure and strong martial power gained from Tai Chi practice and used in self-defense. These are the five types of Qing Qi according to Chen Zhaopi. Actually, it is the summary of different terms used to describe Tai Chi practices of previous generations. Then, according to Chen Zhaopi, what are those five types of zhuo qi that indicate five types of common mistakes that happened in Tai Chi practice? Let me list them here and explain them one by one. It is worth noting that qi in Chinese culture can be translated as a result of doing one understanding a practice. The five zhuo qi are first, heng qi. Depending on the context, Heng can mean different things, horizontal, uh, vicious, abnormal, and so on. In Tai Chi practice, according to Chen Zhaopi, Heng Qi is the energy in the chest blocked from sinking down to the lower Dantian. Shortness of breath is one of the visible symptoms in practice. Second, Xie Qi. Oh, evil energy. Chen Zhaopi said that if someone cannot breathe well during practice, it implies their breathing is abnormal, called Xie Qi. Third, Ni Qi. The term is directly borrowed from TCM. In TCM, it is the syndrome of reverse flow of the Qi. According to Chen Zhaopi, when you practice Tai Chi, the shoulders and the elbows cannot be relaxed, which will otherwise lead to Ni Qi or reverse energy flow. Fourth, Zhi Qi. Zhi means energy stagnation. This indicates energy is stopped or blocked in the body and cannot circulate freely. Fifth, Zhuo Qi or unclear energy. According to Chen Zhaopi, in Tai Chi practice, if you are heavy on the upper part but light in the lower part, energy-wise, or shang zhong xia qing, that is the result of only using postnatal energy. Those are the five incorrect practices of Tai Chi expressed using the word qi or energy. <coughs> to summarize, Chen Zhaopi used two types of qi, qing qi and zhuo qi, with 
five further categories of subtypes of each to describe five types of correct and incorrect practices. The main objective of understanding these 10 terms is to help practitioners choose the right practice method. So, how should you understand and apply these terms in practice? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 4. Qingxi and Zhuoqi Understanding and Application The five types of Qingxi or prenatal energy actually cannot be practiced by mere mechanically practice of the Tai Chi form. The five Qingxi are five philosophical terms used to express a state of an entity in the universe. That is why I have explained all of those terms in many prior videos. Without a deep understanding of ancient Chinese philosophical concept, it is impossible to understand those terms and apply them in your practice. I recommend watching my Tai Chi imagery video titled Internal Style Concept 45 Tai Chi Imagery Tai He Yuan Qi, which will help you understand the fundamental Tai Chi concept and apply it in your practice. Link is in the description. Based on my experience, Tai He Yuan Qi is the foundation of all other types of energy listed in Chen Zhao Pi's writing. A recent video of mine titled Internal Style Concept 52 Tai Chi Three Stage Theory Wu Ji, Tai Ji, and Liang Yi explains how to manage and apply Tai Chi energy in a dynamic state. Again, new knowledge should be built upon prior knowledge. At the same time, new knowledge should also refine and reinforce prior knowledge in a feedback loop. Continuous integration and improvement is the best solution to elevate the learning result. Now, let's talk about how to prevent the five Zhuo Qi or types of sick energy listed in Chen Zhao Pi's writing. Well, the solution is best described using only one word, relaxation. Relaxation in Tai Chi means both physical and mental relaxation, not only in a static state but also in dynamic state. It is much easier to have static relaxation than dynamic relaxation. So, how should you practice in a dynamic state? Well, the solution is to focus on movement, not on respiratory breathing. Only the movement, including both physical and energetic movements, will lead to real relaxation, physical as well as energetic. Furthermore, focusing on respiratory breathing will lead to stiffness. It is a very important Tai Chi principle that you should never neglect in your practice. Merely remembering it without proactively applying it in practice will also lead you to stiffness. To summarize, Tai Chi practice should not merely remain at a physical level but should reach an energetic level. When reading Tai Chi documents, Terms such as energy and movement should be understood and impact your practice on the energetic level, which is the ideal approach. Or else, sick energy will definitely manifest, hindering your experience of qing qi or prenatal energy. So, what are some important principles of qing qi and zhuo qi? That brings us to the next topic. Topic 5. Principles of Qing Qi and Zhuo Qi Well, you don't have to memorize all of the five specific categories 
each of the qingxi and the zhuo qi. You have to know at least the meaning of qingxi and the zhuo qi. This concept is not at all hard to understand but also not that easy to apply in practice. Let me introduce three important principles relevant to qingxi and zhuo qi. They are first, qi bu ben yu shen ze xu er bu shi, bu xing yu si shao ze shi er reng xu. Second, lian li bu lian qi, lian qi ze zhi, zhi ze bu ling, lian li li zhi er qi shuang. Third, xu shi he yi gui yu hun yuan. Let me explain it one by one. First, qi bu ben yu shen ze xu er bu shi, 不行于四烧，则时而仍虚。Translation: Energy not rooted in the Dantian is insufficient. Energy unable to circulate to the limbs may seem sufficient, but is still insufficient. End translation. This proverb emphasizes two important aspects. First, martial power should originate. From the Dantian area, and two, power should be transferred to arms and legs in practice. In other words, Tai Chi energy should be everywhere in the body. Second, Lian Li Bu Lian Qi, Lian Qi Ze Zhi, Zhi Ze Bu Ling, Lian Li Li Zhi Er Qi Zhuang. Translation: Focus on principle, not energy, or else it will lead to Stagnation. Stagnation will lead to stiffness, while focusing on principle will strengthen the energy. End translation. It says that in practice, only focusing how energy circulates in the body is not the right approach either. Remember, you should focus on the movement in practice since energy. Is part of the movement. Third, xu shi he yi gui yu hun yuan. Translation: Integrate xu and shi and return to the hun yuan state. End translation. I created this one in order to emphasize the concept that Tai Chi practice is originally rooted in hun yuan. In martial arts. Xu means insubstantial, while Shi means substantial, or aspects of Yin and Yang. Both aspects should be integrated as one and eventually return to Hun Yuan or Wu Ji state. By the way, to better understand the term Xu Shi, please watch my video titled "Substantial and Insubstantial Internal Styles Concept 8." Link is in the description. Those were three important principles to manage qingqi and zhuo qi. I will introduce more principles in the future. Now let's look at the common misperception in the next topic. Topic six: misperceptions. A very common misperception is that since the principle is important, it is sufficient to spend. All of one's time and effort studying concepts and the principles without actually practicing the Tai Chi movement. This is a very bad habit in the Tai Chi community, since some people falsely believe that reading and analyzing the Tai Chi principles without sufficient physical practice is a good solution to avoid mistakes. In reality. Understanding terms without deliberately applying them to practice will only end up rendering those terms useless. Tai Chi, as a martial art style, requires us to not only understand some terms but more importantly, also to physically practice them. In other words, without physical practice, you will not achieve. Any real understanding of those terms and concepts. Terms are used to explain practice, and concepts are discovered during practice by others, but have to be applied directly 
to your own practice. It's impossible to avoid mistakes in the process of a practice, but that is no excuse to avoid the practice. So you should focus on practice and uh, at the same time make a conscious effort to apply those concepts and the principles to practice. That is the only way to make progress in Tai Chi practice. Seventh, demonstration. Today I will demonstrate a Tai Chi movement to illustrate Tai Chi relaxation, which is a solution to avoid five zhuo qi or five thick energies. Now, a little bit fast speed. Okay? <clears throat> Topic 8 Correction of uh, Students' Practice. Okay, let my students practice part of the Tai Chi wave hands and then I correct his uh, movement. Okay, you can start from there, slowly. Okay, now you can come to here now, the center. So start from the, yes. So first, the left knee bend a little more. Second, the right hand, the finger not pointed to here, upward a little bit. So elbow will be able to sink downward. Third, uh, for the left palm, here, lead, put a little bit of chopping motion here, and the elbow extends forward. Right. Then look to the left side. Now, start. One. Okay, one. The first move, be careful here, like here, right? The palm move up in front of the, chest, the shoulder, then elbow maintain lower posture, then palms move up. Yes. So, one. Yes. It's good. It's good. Thank you. Topic 9. Takeaways. First, Sheng Xi Tongdian theory talks about the concept of the unity of heaven and human beings. That theory is used not only in TCM but also in Chinese martial arts. Second, Qi in Tai Chi. Qing Qi and Zhuo Qi were used to by Chen Zhao Pi to explain Tai Chi practice. Third, five types of Qing Qi and Zhuo Qi in Tai Chi, which are ten important terms to explain the right Tai Chi concept and the incorrect Tai Chi practices. Fourth, Qing Qi and Zhuo Qi, understanding and application. Focus on Tai Chi movement and energy will flow. Fifth, principles of Qing Qi and Zhuo Qi. First, energy not rooted in Dan Tian is insufficient. Energy unable to circulate to the limbs may seem sufficient but is still insufficient. Second, focus on principle, not energy, or else it will lead to stagnation. Stagnation will lead to stiffness while focusing on principle will strengthen the energy. Third, integrate Xu and Shi and return to the Hun Yuan state. Six, a common misperception is that is sufficient to study concepts without actually applying them in Tai Chi movements. Remember, it's a misperception. You need to apply this concept and the principles in your practice of a Tai Chi movement. Make sure to check out the demonstration and the student correction section 
to get a better idea of how to apply qing qi and avoid zhuo qi in your practice. That brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks for watching. See you next time and enjoy your practice.